Grade 5 Math Number 10, Inverse Operations. An inverse operation is an opposite method. Division is the inverse operation of multiplication, and subtraction is the inverse of addition. The word invert means to put upside down or in the opposite position, to reverse. So whenever you see the word inverse, just think reverse, okay? Look at these. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. See, that's the inverse. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. That's the inverse. Remember that the big number is the dividend. The one that we're dividing into it is the divisor. And the answer is the quotient. Okay? In 48 divided by 6, we can say 6 times n is 48. If n is 8, we know that 48 divided by 6 is 8. See? We use the inverse. So we can use an inverse operation to help solve a problem. Using the relationship between multiplication and division, we can solve a division problem because we know that they're the inverse of each other. Okay? The distributive property says that we can multiply a sum, that would be the 12, by a number, or we could multiply each add end of 12, 7 and 5, by that number, by that 3, and then add the products together. So we can either do 3 times 12, or we can do 3 times 7 plus 5, which equals 12. See? Either way, it's going to equal 36. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 3 times 5 is 15. 21 and 15 is 36. See? We can also use the distributive property and an area model. For 48 divided by 6, we can say 6 times n is 48. Well, we know that 6 times 5 is 30, so I'll use 5 as my first one. And 30 from 48 is 18, so I have 18 left over. 6 times what is 18? So I've got 6 times 5 plus 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18. And I know they equal 48. So I pull the add-ins, the 5 and the 3, which equal 8, and I know that 48 divided by 6 is 8. See? I used the add-ins. I used the distributive property. We can use multiplication and the distributive property to solve division problems. For a 133 divided by 7, I'm going to use the 10 times table because that's really fast and everyone knows their 10 times table, right? 7 times 10 is 70. 70 from 133 leave 63 left over. 7 times what is 63? 7 times 9. So I take the 10 and the 9 as the add-ends, I put them together, and I've got 19. So now I know that 133 divided by 7 is equal to 19. Let's try it again. 128 divided by 8. Let's do 8 times 10. So we have an 80, and we still have 48 left over to make 128. So I know I have an 8 times 10. 8 times what is 48? 8 times 6. So now I pull the 10 and the 6 add-ins out. I add them together. They are 16. So I know that 128 divided by 8 equals 16. All right, let's see what happens when we have a bigger number. 156 divided by 6. Well, let's do 6 times 10. Well, that's 60. I'm still pretty far off from 156. Let's do another 60. Now I'm at 120, because 60 and 60 is 120. I'm still 36 away from 156. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. So now I know I have a 6 times 10, a 6 times 10, and a 6 times 6. I pull the 10, the 10, and the 6. I add them together and get 26. And I know that 156 divided by 6 is 26. That helped. By breaking the dividend into smaller pieces, it's easier to solve the equation. For 168 divided by 3, I can break it into 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, and 18. Wow, that's a lot of small pieces. Well, I know my 10 times table very quickly. So that's why I used it. So I know I've got 3 times 10, 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 and there was 18 left over to get to 168. And I know that 3 times 6 is 18. So now I pull all those 10s, 
and I've got one, two, three, four, five of them, that's 50, and the three times six, I pull the six, add it to the 50, and I've got 56. So now I know that 168 divided by three is 56. So even if we have to break it into many small pieces, it'll still work, okay? So this is how I want you to think of the distributive property. I want you to think of a mother bird who is feeding her little nestlings in a nest. She feeds the first one, the worm, and then, see, she's distributing the worm to each bird, to each nestling. So she distributes it to this one, and then she distributes it to this one. Just like the four is like the mother bird, and inside this parentheses looks like a nest, the four goes to the three, and then it goes to the six. Four times three is twelve, four times six is twenty-four, see? That equals thirty-six, see? So whenever you see the distributive property like this, think of the mother bird going and feeding her baby birds in the nest, okay? So, that's how inverse operations can help us solve problems, division problems, and that's how we can split a division problem up into smaller pieces, into add-ins, to help us solve the problem, okay? Keep up the good work, and I'll see you next video. Bye!